Welcome to this new section on lag features. In this section we're going to introduce the idea of lag features, when we should use these features, how we can create these features, and then how to decide which lag features to use in practice and go over some practical examples. In this particular lecture we're going to introduce the idea of a lag feature and why we should use them. So what's the motivation for using lag features? Let's consider a specific example. Here we have a daily time series for the sales of some product, and we also have as a feature the advertising spend. So AD here is the abbreviation for advertising. And so we're sat here at some time, and we have the past values of the sales, and we want to predict the sales of the next day. We also have the advertising spend on the day that we observe the sales, and we also have the advertising spend in the future value as well. So, what do we want to do? We want to predict the future values of our target variable. So we want to predict the future values of the sales in this example. Now a good place to start is the past values of the target itself. This is because the previous values in the time series are very likely to be predictive of future values. So the sales today and the day before are likely to be predictive of the sales tomorrow. Now that intuition also extends to other features. So the past values of a feature could also be predictive. For example, the sales on uh, a given day could be related to the advertising spend on previous days. So a lag feature is where we're using the value of the target or feature k periods into the past. So we're directly using the past value of the target or feature itself. The amount by which we lag is called k and we set it ourselves. So let's look at a specific example. So here we create a new feature which is our target time series lagged by 1. And so at each time point the value is created by looking at the previous value of the time series. So on the 16th here the value from the 15th is used. On the 15th the value from the 14th is used directly. And so in this way we're using the previous value of the time series in addition to the advertising spend to try and predict the future value of the time series. Now let's look at an example where the lag is larger than 1. So here the lag is 2. So at this time step t here we'll look at the second time step before that. So we'll look at time step t minus 1, t minus 2 and use that to create the feature at that point in time. And we do this for each row there. And so this creates a sales feature of lag 2. Note that at the start of the lag feature we'll get missing data equivalent to the size of the lag. That's because we can't look further into the past to compute the lag feature. And so either we would have to drop or impute this missing data in practice. In practice we would create multiple lag features with different lags from both the target and features. So we have our target variable and we'd create lag features from the target. So in this case we create a lag of 1, a lag of 3, and then we might also create features from the original features. So here we have the advertising spend and we could create a lag uh, feature of 1 here from the advertising spend and a lag of 2. And so now there's an open question which is, well which specific lags should we use and how many lag features should we create? And so we address this in later parts of this section. So the next natural question that arises is how do we do this in Python? So lag features can easily be implemented in pandas when we're using a data frame using the dot shift method. We can either specify the number of time steps that we want to shift by in periods or we can specify a string value which uh, tells you the time horizon that you want to shift by. So let's look at some specific examples. Here we have our original time series represented by a data frame. You can see the time index here and the value stored in the column y. Now we might want to create a lag of two months. So we can simply shift y by two periods. We specify that the periods argument is equal to two. So now you can see that the value at say for example the third month 
is equal to the original time series at the first month. So we've successfully created a lag of two. One thing to note is that periods actually ignores the time horizon here. It just simply says shift my time series or shift my data frame by two rows. It doesn't care about whether or not this is a time index, whether the time index represents monthly, yearly, hourly data, or even some integer index. If we wanted to specify a specific time period by which we want to lag, so if we want to be explicit about the two months, we can specify that we're dealing with a, with a month in the freak argument here, so the frequency. If we specify that the frequency is monthly, so MS here stands for month start, and then specify two here, this is equivalent to lagging by two months. And what this does is it actually shifts the time index, so the index has been shifted by two months. So rather than shifting the rows down by two, the time index has been incremented by two months. And you still have the same relationship between the time index and the value as you did when you shifted just using periods. You could also specify a lag of two months by just specifying freak, so you don't need the periods argument, and you specify the number in the string here, so you can specify two months here within the string. Let me just show you that as an example. So here we set an argument, we just can call freak 2ms, so this is two months. And then we create a new feature in our data frame. And here we're going to shift our original data frame and specify that the frequency argument is equal to our frequency variable, which we've set to two months. And then if we look at the resulting data frame, we see we've created our lag feature here and it's lagged by two months. So we might want to implement a transformer to do our lag feature transformations and create our lag features. And so Feature Engine actually provides a class called Lag Features that allows us to implement the lag feature transformation in a transformer so that we can make it part of a feature transformation pipeline. And so we can specify which variables in the original data frame we want to lag. And then the arguments that we would pass to dot shift can also be passed to specify which lags we want. So let's just demonstrate an example here. So from feature engine dot time series dot forecasting, we import our lag features class. And then we create our lag transformer from the lag features class. And we specify which columns we want to transform. So in this case, it's Y. And then we want to specify the lags. And we do that by specifying the frequency and giving a list of different amounts by which we want to lag. So one month, two month, and three month. And we can call fit transform on the lag transformer object and apply it to our data frame. And so now we can create our lag features using a transformer. So to summarize, lag features are a way of predicting future values of our time series using past values of either the target variable or the features themselves. There's an open question in terms of which features do we need to lag and by how much. And we cover that in future lectures in this section. So I'll see you in the next lecture, which is a notebook which shows us how we can actually implement the lag features that I've discussed in this lecture. See you then.